Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at rolling statistics with financial data. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure if you haven't already installed Y Finance so that we can get a hold of our data. We also want to import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, np, import seaborn as sns, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then we'll also do matplotlib inline, and we'll also, again, want to import y finance as yf. Whoops, my finance. So the rolling statistics itself is uh, very traditional, okay, for financial indicators and financial studies. So we're going to definitely be needing to dive into this, particularly when we're creating financial charts. So the first thing that we will do is let's go on and get some data. So let's do df dot uh, yf dot what? What do we want? Let's do download. And I actually have a list from last time. So let me pull that back up. So I have this uh, dictionary of some sample stocks. Again, there's kind of some typical things that I like to look at. And we will uh, use this to go on and grab a bunch of data. So if we do decide to, maybe we'll just maybe go over like one stock and then we'll, we can maybe add in more if we, if we so choose. So let's go on and do um, df is equal to yf dot download here. And we want our stocks dot keys oh, stocks dot keys so we'll go through and create up our data so let's do um, df is equal to y fine yf dot download and here we want a list of our stocks dot keys we'll let it download whatever data that it needs in here and again we'll have some missing data so we'll want to also clean that up so i know it does so we'll just do something like um we'll just grab the adjusted close and we'll do Actually, you know what? Let's do the open today. So we'll do uh, df is equal to df of open dot drop in a. So we'll get, we'll remove all the missing values there. Run that. And now let's do something like df dot head. Whoops, head. Take a look at our data. Okay, it looks nice and clean. Uh, let's also make sure and look at the tail. And again, it's looking nice and clean. So let's go on and kind of do a bit of an overview of uh, how we derive uh, rolling statistics, okay, with pandas. So first off, we always need a window. And so let's say that we want to define it of however many index values that we want to include, then let's also go through and we will do something like df of min, and we'll say uh, df, and let's do this for a specific, a specific one. So we want, let's do Amazon, okay, dot rolling, window is equal to window uh, dot min. And you know what? Let's also make this reusable. So let's say symbol is equal to Amazon. And we can use this later on to change up which ones we want to do statistics with. So symbol. And we can also go on and do this 
again for however many uh, we want. So let's do min, mean, standard deviation, median, max, and what else would we want? And here maybe an exponential uh, weighted moving average. So let's do mean, uh, standard deviation, median, max, and then again, exponential weighted moving average. And then we'll go back over here. And we want to change this up again. So we'll do mean, standard deviation, median, max. And then this needs to be, actually we don't need this for this one. We need symbol dot exponential weighted moving. All right, we want half-life here to be, let's say 0 0.5. Min periods here is going to be our window dot mean. Let that run. And I notice again, these are these calculations are very quick. So here we're going to basically be driving, uh, deriving a bunch of our own specialized indicators, okay? Uh, when we, and again, we can always do all kinds of interactive plotting if we want uh, to as well, and we can use this uh, to create other custom things using like the apply method or whatnot. And let's also go on and take a look at the data. So we'll do df.head and run. And notice now we have all of our statistics. So and now notice also though we have a lot of NAs and missing data. So let's go on and also take care of that. Because again, remember, this is a, oh, we have this rolling average, this window here is gonna be of 20. So it basically moved everything 20 spaces. Uh, so let's do drop NA, turn on that. And then now we actually have our values. So now let's go on and actually plot this out, okay? So we can get a nice, a nice look at everything. So we want, let's actually drop this and do drop an A. And again, I know that it's bad to overwrite stuff, but again, we're just kind of playing with stuff today. So let's go on and say axis is equal to DF of, we want the min, we want the mean, and we want the max. So let's do iloc of negative 200 dot plot. And we want in here, big size is equal to maybe a 10 by six. Um, and you know what, I think, what, what type of style do we want here? Style here will be something like, we want green dashed, we want some red dashed. Um, what else do we want? Um, we want again in here, because again, we're doing, we're having the min and the max. Okay, so when we're actually plotting this out, this will look uh, nice if we do something like uh, green dash as well, because then we'll have like these max and min values kind of easing up through everything and it'll look really nice there. Uh, and let's also do a line width here of 0 0.6. We want these to be really faint. And then let's also go on and do um, uh, df of our symbol here and we want dot i loc of negative 200 and we'll do plot axis is equal to axis um, let's, let's make it nice and fat run this and we should get a nice 
visual here. So notice what we see here is these nice uh, rolling statistics that we have, okay? So we have our minimum and our maximums. So, and that's the green area that we see here. So this is the max, of course. This is gonna be the min rolling average uh, is going to be this nice sloping one, okay? And that's gonna give us this uh, great additional uh, time series uh, plotting mechanism that we have. So let's maybe go through and do a little bit more of a technical analysis. Okay, so let's do analysis. And what I mean by that is we'll do something like um, uh, uh, simple moving averages. Okay, so, um, and then maybe we'll look at uh, doing something else. We'll change up the number of the, the size of the window and everything else, okay? So this is a very old, simple moving average is just a, a really old trading strategy that is used uh, as a nice financial instrument. And again, we have maybe a short term and a long term uh, simple moving average. So we should be able to look and take a look at those as well. So they're generally calculated so that there's enough data given per window. So we want maybe, let's, let's actually just do them nice and simply. So let's do DF of simple moving average one here, and we'll do uh, DF of uh, symbol uh, dot rolling here and we'll have our first window here to be uh, 42. We want the mean. Then we're going to do same thing here, but we'll do simple moving average of two. And here, let's give a long <coughs> term moving average. So let's say, what would we like here? Mm, let's do a window of 252 as well and it didn't like oh whoops because I had window window there we go and it didn't like some of this but that's that's gonna be okay we're gonna ignore it for now uh, let's go on and do something like um, DF of Uh, symbol, we want SMA1, SMA2. And we're just going to go on and look at the tail for now so we get this. And notice now we have our Amazon stock, we have our simple moving average one and our simple moving average two. So this one, this first one here again is our short, uh, our short run, okay? Moving average, again, 42 days. And then we have our long run, which is 252 days. So let's go on and maybe visualize these to see how this goes. So in context, um, again, so we're only gonna be going up to a certain point. So let's do df.dropNA in place, it's true. Then we want to do a couple more things here of, let's create our positions. Okay, so DF positions. So again, <clears throat> this would be like our triggering positions, okay? So we want to visualize our long position uh, by a value of one and our short position at a value of negative one. Okay, so, uh, uh, so we'll say here, our uh, long position of one and then short of two. So we'll have our positions and now this is gonna be nice as we can do np dot where data of SM, not data, DF of our simple moving average one is greater than df of our simple moving average two. 
and we want one else negative one. So this is gonna be able to create a nice little trading strategy for us. And again, let's not worry about any of the caveats that we've done there. We're just kind of running through this uh, quickly. So let's go on and make a plot of this. So we want our moving average, both of them, short run and long run. And we also need in here our positions. So let's go on and plot this. Fig size here is equal to 10 by six. Uh, and we'll have a secondary Y in here. Uh, let's do, let's move this over and let's tab that out and do secondary Y. Here is positions. So this is gonna make it so that we're able to visualize both of these. So again, the symbol, the the moving average one and moving average two here are going to be fine because they're all in kind of the same uh, scope, okay? But this, uh, this these positions here is, remember, uh, either negative one or one. So that's going to be very important for us. All right, now let's go and say axis.get legend. Here and we'll set up our box to anchor here and we'll say 0 0.25 by 0 0.85. Let's run this. And so in here we can see, uh oh, and it's anchor. Anchor, there we go. So now we can see that we have these nice little trade areas. So we have, for example, in here, if our short-term moving average is gonna be greater than uh, our long-term moving average, we'll go, we'll go long on a stock at put one, okay? So otherwise, we'll go to shot, uh, a short at negative one. So this gives us these nice bands in here where we want to uh, sell or not sell. So this trading strategy is implicitly derived again here. It's only going to lead to very few trades, as you can see all through here. We only have, what, one, two, three, four trades over, um, over a 10-year span. Uh, so basically any of these crossover points here. Okay. Uh, now... Again, this is also going to be, maybe we want to include a couple others because, again, we looked at the opening strategies and uh, maybe we want to look at closing strategies. And this will add up to maybe a couple more later on if we if we start looking at different aspects and digging in a little bit more. Um, next time in the video, we're going to be looking at a correlation analysis of uh, the same data set. If you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.